Welcome to all the beloveds of God as we gather for devotions on this Wednesday, August 18th. So we are continuing towards answering the question, you know, what do you need? Today it is going to be in the book of Job. Job is very unique in all of the scriptures that we have. It is classified as wisdom literature, but it is something much, much more than that. And it looks in many ways through many commentaries at the questions, why do bad things happen to good people? Many of those things that we struggle with. The bottom line, really, in the book of Job is that it is a book about justice. And the idea of justice, the idea that, you know, what we are in in human existence is this idea that the realities in many ways in which human beings and God in Job do not always manifest what we expect. What we expect in action and words and failed deal fair dealings with others. Uh, if we're honest in our prayer time, in our crying out to God, um, it often is not thinking of everyone, but in that moment thinking of ourselves. Most of the time there's not a problem with that because we have very personal things that we bring to God. The challenge is when we try to push God in a certain direction, to do something in a certain way or be something in a certain way, and not realizing that were everything to circulate around us there would be a lot of people left out of the equation. You know, I always think when I teach confirmation, and you know, you have prayer time, and what do the kids pray for? Well, if they have a sporting event, what do they pray for? To win. Is that a fair prayer? No, it's a teachable moment. Because if we pray to God to win, what else are we asking God to do? to cause someone else to lose. The fair prayer, the justice prayer, would say that we will play to the best of our ability, that we will use the training we have to play the best game, whatever it is, that we can. And if we win, that's one outcome. But if we lose, we also have the opportunity to congratulate the winners and to use what we've learned from that encounter for the next game that we play. So justice in prayer and justice in the world is brought up in Job. And when we read it, we can hear unfairness when we read it, we also know that the reason we hear unfairness is the truth of life isn't always fair. But even in the midst of that which doesn't go our way, God is still with us. I am Heather E. Clausen, pastor of Herman United Methodist Church in Herman, Minnesota. I want to begin with these words in Job. We're just taking this small section out of chapter 2, beginning at verse 11 to the end of chapter 2. Now when Job's three friends heard all of these troubles that had come upon him, each of them set out from his home, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite, excuse me, they met together to go and console and to comfort him. 
When they saw him from a distance, they did not recognize him. And they raised their voices and wept aloud. They tore their robes and threw dust in the air upon their heads. They sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. What a picture of a friend's. You know, sometimes we think, you know, what, what does make a person a friend and, and who are our best friends? Maybe that's the thought. Who would travel? And think about in that time, the long distances of travel from three different places. Who would travel to just sit with us? If we were ill, if we had experienced trauma, if we had grief and sadness, who would do that? And what have we done in the times when we know someone's suffering? How have we responded? So answering the question, what do you need? We can look at this story. Job has suffered everything imaginable of horror. He's lost his family. He's lost his home. He's lost his business. He's lost his health. And these three friends come. Job is covered with sores and he's swollen. And Well, two things here. One, in their culture, they should have backed away because you weren't to be near someone with any kind of lesions or sores. Two, they didn't even recognize him. And yet they stay. And what did they do to minister to him? The most important thing ever, they sat with him. They didn't try to explain it away. They didn't try to tell him things would get better. In those seven days, they sat and grieved with him. They were deeply loyal to this friend and they wanted to be there for him. And when they saw what they saw, they had no words. And that's okay. Because sometimes we try to fill the silence. We try to take care of our discomfort by talking. And sometimes all someone needs is for someone who cares about them or loves them to just sit with them and let them talk when they are ready to talk. That's hard, isn't it? Number one, we're not a very silent people. Number two, we think that our words of comfort are the right words. And number three, we struggle to be around someone in pain. And so we try to fix it. There was no fixing that could be done in those moments with Job. There really is no fixing that we can do when we sit with someone who's lost a child. When we sit with someone who's gotten a diagnosis and are considering treatment plans, or someone who's gotten a diagnosis and hears there is no treatment plan. There are no words. And what people need in that moment, besides the medical personnel, the professional personnel, what they need is someone just to sit with them. It's often exactly what we both need.
So what do we need and also how do we respond to needs is to show up for one another in ways that we're honoring, acknowledging, validating the pain of the moment and we don't back away and we don't try to gloss it over with a quick platitude or fix. When we do that, we do much more harm than good because there are no words. Just, may I sit with you? May I be sad with you? And then sit and wait. That's a ministry of presence and that's a ministry of waiting. Yeah, there are real needs that will need to be met. But the greatest need is to feel love, to feel presence, to feel acknowledged by someone who doesn't try to take away the pain. Sometimes it takes time to move forward. And sometimes it just takes someone sitting. When, when someone's ready to talk or to ask a question, they will. They will. And so what they do is they follow their tradition, which was to go. These friends went to grieve and to be with. And unfortunately, as you read on, they should have stayed quiet. Actually, do read on. Because the other side beyond this passage that I just shared with you from Job is when they begin to speak after the seven days. And they begin to try to explain it. And I think it's kind of more explaining for themselves. That in Job, we get both sides, what we should do and what we should avoid doing. It's, it's a powerful, it's a powerful book of scripture. And it's showing in what we've read today that when we sit with someone in pain, which is what they really need, it's incarnational. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And it's very sacred, sacred time. You know, in our materials that came with um, this worship series, one of the ones who comments on the scripture talked about when um, she was having chaplain, he was having chaplain training, excuse me. He was having chaplain training. Um, one of the instructors used the analogy of a person at the bottom of a hole. So what do we do if we see a person at the bottom of a hole? This is the analogy this instructor used. Well, normally we would get a rope and try to get them out. And what this instructor said, uh, the sacred incarnational act of being with someone in pain is first you go and sit with them at the bottom of the hole to bear witness to what has happened, to sit with them in their reality. Then comes the moving beyond. Obviously the hole is not what we normally would encounter, but this idea of when someone is stuck in painful circumstances, whatever those might be, first we sit with them, then we let them guide us as how best we can be with them beyond that time of silence and sitting. So yes, go ahead and read on because the friends 
also model for us some of the things that we shouldn't say. Go in peace. Amen.